All right, so um, like I said, I'm not gonna worry about leveling for a while. I just wanna get a clean sine wave out. So we now know the amplifier is good. We've put in input and output and it tests good. Um, and from the output of the driver, pre-driver, uh, it was nice and clean. So let's go ahead and hook it all back up. It should give us a clean thing. Now I'm gonna monitor things. Um, I have uh, some test leads hooked up here. So the output of, um, that's a little bit loose. Um, the output of uh, the pre-driver is going to go onto this wire and it's going to come in here and go here. So these guys are now connected together, but I have a, a splitter in it so I can monitor it. So this goes off to the oscilloscope so that we can monitor that signal. So this should be a clean signal. And then uh, this goes off to the oscilloscope for the output. So we can monitor the input, monitor the output. Everything should be just fine. Uh, a lot of people have commented, oh my gosh, what if you had got these things mixed up, all these wires going every which way? Um, how would you ever get them back together? Well, back in the day when they made really good um, service manuals, uh, they actually spent the time, let me change my camera here, spent the time and made this beautiful drawing here a uh, hand drawing of where all the wires go. Uh, so yeah, there you go. So no, no, no worries. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on here on the oscilloscope. All right, so I have the wave tech set to 100 megahertz. This is the input signal. Let's turn on uh, channel two, which is the output signal. And it's completely distorted. Uh, so both things work independently, but they don't work together. now. Uh, let's try some different frequencies here. 200, it's getting better. 300, it's getting pretty good. It's, it's out of phase, but that's fine. Yeah, so it's these low frequencies that, uh, let's see here, let's try real low frequency. Yeah, it's just, you get this input, which is a beautiful sine wave. Let's see if I can display this a little bit nicer. There's the input and there's the output. So, yeah. Now, <clears throat> I know that they both work independently, but they're not working together. So maybe um, there's too much signal. We're overdriving the amplifier. So let's see if we can't put an attenuator in line there and we'll reduce the amplitude going into the final amplifier. See if that fixes things. Let me go grab an attenuator. All right, uh, so I've hooked up an attenuator here. This is a uh, Hewlett Packard Model 355B. Um, and uh, it uh, goes from 10 dB to minus, let's see, minus 10 dB to minus 120 dB steps. Very nice attenuator. So uh, again, this input output was zero attenuation. We'll go down 10 dB. And uh, they both got smaller, which they should have. But same, attenu uh, same distortion, let me go down another 10 dB. And uh, same thing. So it's not really helping, is it? 30 dB, how far does this thing need to go down? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy with this. So, Maybe there's something on the back panel that drives some signal. Um, and I don't entirely have the, uh, the level circuit disconnected. I, re I remove, removed that wire, but I have to be honest, I don't know which wire that was. Um, it just seemed to help. Um, let's take a look at schematic again. All right, so... Um, this does not match what I have though, but it's got these, uh, the input comes through these strange diodes that look like varactors or something. And um, I would imagine that you can change the capacitance of these diodes with this voltage. And there's an adductor here, so you have a CL uh, 
pass filter, right? And um, that's the way you do it. You attenuate it just by changing this filter shape. Um, and the voltage that you drive here comes from the output of this comparator, you know, amp, uh, difference amp. And it looks at the um, voltage on the output and it compares that with some voltage called leveler input. Okay, pin 15 is leveler input. Um, now, which wire did we disconnect? I, I don't know. I thought it was this wire or this wire, but that might have been, uh, been just happy coincidence. Might not be those wires. Uh, like I said, I don't have a schematic for that particular module. Ah, so, um, I think what we've got is this filter is locked to not let through low frequencies. Um, so we could bypass that filter. We could just put a jumper wire across it. We could figure out what level this wants to operate the way it wants. Um, there is a second function, so I should mention this. Um, let's look at the first schematic that's wrong, but it comes with the manual here. And it gives you a little bit of clue of the secondary function that it may be, that it may be doing here. So this is the schematic that does not match, like I said, but uh, it'll help us a little bit, I think. And that is that um, on this one, the input And here's the output. Now the output here is very, very different. You can see here the output has a bunch of um, two-step attendant. Yeah, this is the output. So this one's really odd. It has a couple of reactor diodes, three of them, and a bunch of inductors and stuff. This is a voltage-controlled uh, filter. It's a voltage-controlled low-pass filter. And so it gets rid of the harmonics as you go through the different bands. See if I can find a uh, block diagram here in the book. Yeah, this doesn't show it. I forget where I found it, but there is a variable uh, filter. Here's our voltage variable attenuator. So this is the module we're looking at. So you attenuate the input and then the output goes out and, and this is the error amplifier. So this is, this is what's going on. This is a, level, a leveling circuit right now. But there's also a, second, a secondary um, function that there's a filter. I need to find that. All right, I found it. Uh, so this is the block diagram of the, fil of the, uh, the output amplifier. So um, the voltage signal comes in, it goes through the pin attenuator, um, it goes into the wideband amplifier, that's us three transistors, then it goes into a tracking filter. It was the tracking filter that sparked my interest. Minus 8 volts to plus 8 volts changes from between 0 megahertz and 500 megahertz. So this is a voltage controlled uh, low pass filter. And then there's a monitor diode and the differential amplifier. So this is what's supposed to be in there, okay? And it also makes sure that if it is leveled, it gives a signal and the LED on the front panel lights up says it's leveled. But um, this pin attenuator going into the amplifier and the tracking filter going out of the amplifier. Um, let's see if we can't find that on this new version of the schematic. So here are the pin diodes switching. Uh, so this is the attenuator. Um, but it might do double duty. Let's take a look at the output here. Uh, can this be a voltage control filter? Let's see, there's something going on here. This is just like biasing. 18 volt. Yeah, this is all just DC biasing for this 
for this thing here. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a strange little beast, but he doesn't change, so he's not going to be voltage controlled. And then this is just the monitor. So I don't think there's any tracking filter on the output of this particular amplifier. If there's any voltage control tracking, they've combined both the attenuator and the, and the filter into one unit on the front end. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I have to scratch my head some more.